big ones. You're nodding over there. Those are good, those are good sponsors boxes. that we have. Yeah, exactly. Oh, solid work. Thank you. So you hear the voice there of Sam J, comedian. You might know her from uh, the Tom Brady Roast, uh, the Netflix special that we all discussed, talked about, enjoyed, specifically enjoyed your work very much. She joins us here on the Ford Clubhouse Fenway Studio. Thanks for, for dropping by today, Sam. Thank you for having me. This is really cool. Seriously. So, so you're going to be uh, uh, not performing necessarily tomorrow, but you're going to be, unless they ask you last second, but you're going to be you're going to be <laughs> in attendance at Brady Night tomorrow? Yeah, for sure. I got, um, I got hit with the invite, which I was shocked, but I was like, hell yeah. I feel like they owe you an invite. Yeah, you were yeah. at the Brady Roast. I feel like the least they can do is throw you an invite, right? Yeah, but I don't, I mean, it was roasting him, so I was like, I don't know if he wants me around. <laughs> well, that's fair. I mean, he, might, <laughs> he might not want me back after that. So I've seen uh, I've seen various interviews uh, that you've done. I was watching some of the, the Edelman podcast, yeah. the Games with Names, and you said there you didn't you didn't get much heads up for the, no. the Brady Roast. No, it was like five or six days, somewhere around, like five, six or seven days. I can't quite remember, but somewhere around there. And so that's that's a quick that's a quick turn. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's a little nerve wracking, but I had a <laughs> I had a good amount of time to work the jokes at the cellar at night. And um, my friend Megan Gelly, you know, she jumped on and helped me, and my homie Radio Raheem helped me, and the writers from the roast, like they were all so supportive. So that you know that made it easier, but it was definitely a little nerve wracking at the top. But once I got the jokes together, I was fine. Feeling good. So you felt good about the jokes, but you're a big Boston fan. So once you're there up on the stage, yeah. even though you, there were people going before you. And like hats off to Drew Bledsoe for starting it off yeah. and not being a comedian Rough and doing as well as he did. But <laughs> but once you're sitting there and you see Brady there, was there any part of you that was like, well, where's the line? Or are we already so far beyond it? At that point, we're so far beyond. You know <laughs> what I mean? At that point, it's like, these are the jokes I got. There's nothing I could really do. <laughs> but just go up there and do it and hope it all just goes well. You know what I mean? It's like we're already in too deep. Was there a Robert Kraft edict that you couldn't talk about him? No. No, I just don't have anything bad to say about the man. Oh, come on. I don't. <laughs> come it's on. True. I, don't know. I don't. You have to you say anything think bad, of one joke about him? No jokes. There's got to be some jokes. I just, I love him. He's just so sweet. He wears Nike Air Force One. <laughs> <laughs> So really, no one said anything. No one said anything. No, about no one told me. Because Brady walked up and said, don't say that anymore. But I don't think that we knew that that was going to, you know, that, that wasn't scripted. No, stuff was just happening for sure. <laughs> it was just like, oh, OK, we, we were unaware. But there wasn't really any like, hey, don't say this, don't say that. I, guidelines. I've heard other uh, comedians say, maybe it was Nikki Glazer said this, that um, you guys all kind of got together and, and kind of agreed. Maybe maybe kids were off limits, but not, not nothing. There was nothing else that you couldn't go there. Or well, go. I got there late. So okay, so you be maybe they had that conversation. I just personally don't do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. talk about people's kids and stuff. Uh, so that just wasn't an option for me in any way. But I didn't. I missed the huddle up if that happened. So you you saying before the show that you're a big Boston sports fan? Yeah. Out of all four teams, do you have a favorite? Which one? Man, the Celtics, yeah. The so Celtics. good time for you. The Celtics, my favorite team, probably. Good time right now. I feel, I feel good. Did you hear the Porzingis news? Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to bring you down, but I knew something was going on when he, when he, when he kind of was kind of walking, uh, like not coming up the court quick on that play. I was like, he's probably hurt. I, I get nervous with him whenever he comes. He jumps around too much for me. Like, Cause you know you get hurt. He's got the long legs. I'm he like, doesn't bro, need stop a jump doing all that jump. You be too active a little bit. Like, <laughs> like chill. We don't need you getting trying to get in every. You know what I'm saying? Every think, little tussle and every little. I think they need you on the Celtics coaching staff right now to like save all, him from himself. I think bro, they need you. I really and also I just I'm just like bro, put on some high tops, bro. Like some old school high. Like what's up? Yeah, like one of like the le like the a leather. Old school, give me like a leather ankle brace or something some like that. People from Boston know. <laughs> Well, the people from the hood know what I'm talking about. He needs some Adidas yum yums with the straps. <laughs> the double, he need to hit him with the two times. <laughs> <laughs> the leather soft so he can still get active. Make sure it all stays intact. For yeah. Sure. Uh, definitely. The uh, the Celtics, I remember watching you on Adidas and Mero when yes. the Celtics were in the finals last yes. time. And I said in six. And you made a big prediction and they were wowing yeah. you from uh, up and down. And I was wet. That, yeah. was, that was one of the first times. How dare, I how dare you have a bad take? That never, well, ha that never <laughs> happens on this show. It's yeah, never happened uh, once. But it feels different this year, doesn't it? It does feel different this year. I'm saying I'm, I'm, I, it, it feels different. I, I, I say Celtics in five. Five? Ooh. Yeah. So the Porzingis that cost him a game, maybe. 
I think no, I think I think we was gonna lose one in, in Dallas, but I think we're gonna take one in Dallas. I don't know why. I just I have a feeling we're gonna take one in Dallas. What do you think of this, this Kyrie time? situation right mm -hmm. now? Kyrie? Yeah. You know, I think that Kyrie Kyrie he's a complicated man. I he's such a good player, but his attitude is wishy washy as hell. So I feel like you just can't you just never know what Kyrie you're gonna get. That's the problem, you know? And I think Dallas is just going through what every team that has to deal with Kyrie goes through, which is you just don't know what Kyrie you're going to get. Do you think he's different that. now than he was when I think he's he left a lot Boston? more mature, for sure. And I think he's a lot more just settled in who he is as a person and stuff like that. Absolutely. And even with the games that he's not playing well, I just think he's a vet. So even when he's not playing well, he, he has a better understanding of what that means for him and how to get himself back in the game. Were you so I don't off? think you could count Kyrie out, for sure. Were you one of the fans who were pissed off when he left? No, I was left. pissed off when he came. I knew it was the worst decision <laughs> that we were ever going to... I swear to God. From Isaiah. I swear to God. I thought it was the worst decision that we ever made. I knew it was a bad decision because he's a disruptor. He's not, like, good with, like, teams and stuff. And also not for nothing. Like, Kyrie is, like, a Muslim Israelite. It's like, I'm like, Boston is too white for this. It's not going to work <laughs> it's bad, out. It's a bad fit. It's not going to work out. Yeah. <laughs> it is not a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> Snip that gonna, one out. This is not going to happen. We should have just stuck with Isaiah. I think we could have maybe won a chip with Isaiah, even though he wasn't in top tier condition. I just think he knew how to play with those guys. He knew how to inspire them. They were all bought in. They all believed in each other. And it just was better chemistry. Uh, we're talking to Sam J, comedian, going to be at uh, Brady Night tomorrow. On tour now, you're going to be coming to the Wilbur uh, eventually, right? Yeah, September 7th. September 7th. Yeah, we'll be at, at the, the Wilbur. Wilbur. Yes. So get those tickets now. Yes. Uh, on tour now. We got to sell this thing out, Boston. So yeah, yeah, no, for tickets. sure. Uh, so we'll uh, get people to the Wilbur and get uh, get that place packed out for September 7th. Uh, we were talking a little bit off the air, and we were discussing the, the Celtics. You're not maybe not the biggest Missoula fan. Is that the 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 way to put it? Oh. I, I'm citing. We're not trying to get you in trouble. We're I know. Oh, I, mean, I want to get invited honesty. to a game. Bring, uh -huh. honesty, bring honesty to the table. No, wait, actually, actually. <laughs> but you're a huge fan of Wick, so we we got that. Yeah, going. yeah, yeah. And we want you on the sideline to save Porzingis from himself. But you you tweeted. Uh, this is in April. You said, <laughs> "Are we going to discuss Missoula, or are we just going to keep pretending that he's not the problem?" <laughs> That stuff gets me excited. I got to go through my tweets before I come on shows. <laughs> I, okay, this is okay. I'm going to be I'm going to be This is a safe Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're in the trust tree. You're yeah. among friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the issue. I just don't see I think that he's playing a stat game and he's he's playing a money ball game, right? Yeah. He's like this is about matchups and high percentage shots and if I can just get this equation to work, then this thing is going to work. I don't think basketball works like that. So there's times, and I think we're a lot better, and I think we've made leaps and bounds just even from this Indiana run. Sam J keeps looking over at me because yeah, she knows that I Indiana run to this, uh, <laughs> for real. But I don't know that it's him. That's the reason. I don't know that it's him because I still feel like, yo, like, we went so long with no leadership, right? Who's the, who's the captain of the Celtics? Who's the guy on the floor that the ball has to go through their hands when things are going crazy to settle everybody down? I think coaching is a part of what makes those type of decisions. You start to build those type of things and practice and with coaching. And I just don't see him putting that type of stuff into the team. I don't see him lighting the right fires under people's asses at the right time. Sorry. No, no, uh, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, yo, when, when we're not playing well and when the thing's falling apart, th there is nothing that really rallies us around to get us right. It just becomes this, like, iso ball, everyone take your shot, like they playing at Washington Park. And it's like, well, now's the time we need to be drawing up some plays and figuring out some stuff. And I just don't see a lot of that happening. You know what I mean? So what it is in a disastrous state, I do kind of got to look at Joe as like, yo, you got these young men who are at the height of their career and are ready to go. But, like, you don't know how to just, like, sit them down and cuss them out sometimes and just be like, hey, what are you doing? And do you guys really want this? And I think you need some of that to, to bring home a championship. I agree. I, uh, I was going to say, that's like, that's like Mad Mego definitely agrees with that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the debate that's been going on, particularly on the national level, about like the other day, Jason Kidd saying Jalen Brown is the best player on the Celtics and this whole dynamic of whose team is it right now, Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown's? You were just talking about 
the leadership on the floor, who do you feel like that is right now? I mean, I think Jalen Brown is emerging as a leader. I mean, he just is. You know what I mean? He's he's coming in. He's being clutching games. He's also just like that game when he was just mic'd up. He's talking on the sidelines. He's he's like trying to be that guy. You know what I mean? That's gonna stare and steady the ship. And I don't think that's a problem. I don't think it is about like Tatum or Brown. It's like how do we win games? And that's one thing I have to say. I respected Tatum for saying like, yo, I could get out here and try to score all these points. But if that's not what's going to win us the game, then what does it matter? You know what I mean? And it's like, how can they two come together to win us basketball games? I think that's the, that's the most important thing. So, Sam, you and I are about the same age. Uh, we experienced the 90s. He keeps saying that. You know, he, keeps, no. he keeps saying that over and over again. I, well, I just said it the first time. Well, I, I said it off the air before. Yeah, off air. You're like, <laughs> what school did you go to? You Who do you know? Quiet. Let me ask my question. What's your, what's your favorite restaurant in the North End? Oh, sorry. Never <laughs> play stickball? <laughs> Playing stickball is fun in the North End. Uh, but the uh, the 90s were a time where it was tough to be a Boston sport. Yeah, yeah. everybody was bad, especially e the Celtics. Every way, it was yeah. bad. It was uh, bad. So those are like your formative years as a sports fan. Yeah. I've been seeing that. So that's the thing. Like, uh, that's why I always have to be honest about, like, when I'm like, the Celtics are my team. I wasn't, I wasn't, like, riding or dying through the 90s. I wasn't, like, bleeding green the whole way through. It, when it was bad, I was, like, first coming into basketball. So during the 90s, I was just kind of like picking squads. I wasn't, seriously, like I was like, one year I was like liking Sacramento. One year I'm like liking the Knicks. I'm just kind of like, I like these people and how they play together. And then I became like a Kobe fan. I won't say I'm a Lakers fan, but I am a Kobe fan. Um, and it, it wasn't really until we got rid of Walker. Paul was like the man. Mm -hmm. Then I started to, to like, kind of buy in to what was going on with the Celtics. Before the big three or right before, like, right after? Right, right before, right as that was like, right as that was kind of swirling around is when I got in and I was like, yeah, this is fully, like, going to be my team. I feel like you were tapping into that 90s angst when you were going after Drew Bledsoe. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. When, when <laughs> they gave me the list of, like, who was there – the first person I picked was Drew. I was like, okay, I'm going to talk about Drew Bledsoe because I just need to get that off my chest. <laughs> I just got to unburden myself, I just gotta unburden yeah, myself yeah. with some of that. And then uh, I picked everybody else afterwards. Uh, so uh, it's Sam J here with us on Jones and Mega with Arcan on WEE. I should be at the Wilbur on uh, September 7th. You can also follow her on Twitter, at uh, Sam J Comic. Uh, same on Instagram as well. So is there anything that was your favorite moment from that night? Like anything that jumped out, whether it was your set, whether it was after, before the show, like, was there anything that jumped out where you're like? Afterwards, I, I had I had on this like watch. It was like a bust down, so it was all like a diamond watch uh, that I had bought a few years ago, and I had it on. And Tom had on a really cool watch, and I was like, I got a really cool watch, and he was like, Damn, Sam, what you spending all your, what you doing with all your money? And I was like, I'm blowing it. And he was like, me too, baby. And I was like, that's cool. Yeah, it was all, it's all on crypto. I, we, we, all, we all saw, we know what he's doing with his money. Like, that's pretty awesome. So did he, did he hang out? I kind of heard mixed things. Like, did he hang out after the show? Did he kind of jet out after the show? Like, did he, was he around? After I saw him for like a little while yeah. after like hanging out in the hallways and stuff. But I did not see him at the party when we were like, everyone was like drinking and stuff. Got it. Okay. So like. It felt like the ro it was supposed to be the roast of Brady, and I know we're a month plus out from it, but it kind of just turned into the roast of Gronk. <laughs> in person, <laughs> in person was the vibe like everybody's friends here and it's all good. Or did it get to a point before Gronk talked and was like fumbling the props under the podium and everything, where it was like, man, Gronk is like really taking it right now. Uh, it, it definitely was everybody's all good and everybody's friends here. And, um, I do think like Brock is Gronk, excuse me, Gronk is way more in on the joke than people give him credit for. You know what I mean? Like he, he gets it. And like, even when he did his roast part, I was like, wow, he's fully in and on it. And actually like, he's super smart. Like I thought his jokes were super smart about how like y'all think I'm dumb. Right, right. <laughs> and I know y'all think I'm dumb. You know what I mean? So like he's way more in on it than it than it comes off. And so it was super chill. I like any like tension. The or... giant penis from Florida all the way to Boston. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was very highbrow. I thought. Yeah, yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought that was a, a high level thinking. I mean, so, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, that was quality. That was quality penis material. Uh, did you guys? Did you write any jokes for any of the athletes? No. No. But they, that's, I mean, they got, they had writers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had writers okay. for the roast for sure. So whenever there's a roast, I always assume that it's the other people who are up there writing the jokes for the non-comedians, but it's not generally, how does that, how does that usually go? 
Um, they have like a writing staff that okay. they get way before that been working on it, that been writing jokes, that been spitballing it. Um, and then also the, you know, the people like, uh, the athletes, they sometimes like no comics and want to bring somebody, they can do that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. They all do the uh, podcast. With yeah, them. exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, that also makes me want to ask you with roast now back. I mean, the comedy central roast were on forever and then there was this big gap yeah. and now it seems like this thing happened. It was really successful. It did a lot for everybody who was part of it. Yeah. Is this something you're hoping to be like, if they bring back the roast every year, is that something you want to be a part of? I don't know. Oh, man like I, I don't I don't want to say no but I don't want to say yes like it really was like it's Tom Brady that's what got me to say yes I was like it's Tom Brady but I don't really consider myself like a roaster you know what I mean so if it was just like some random person that I just gotta like be mean to that I don't actually have like love in my heart for <laughs> I don't know if I could do it because it, it would feel who would you want to roast like if you could pick somebody who you would have love in your heart for but you could roast who would you want to roast Chris Rock yeah. Yeah. That would be a good one. What could you possibly say about Chris Rock? <laughs> <laughs> Chris Rock, that would be cool because I really love him. You know what I mean? And uh, What about roasting someone like you don't like? Who would I want to roast that I don't like? Yeah. This Ooh. show? No. <laughs> That's tough. Dang. Missoula. That's hard. <laughs> there you go. Pop him up there. Yeah, probably, Joe. Yeah, yeah put, him the, <laughs> put him in the hot seat. There were some uh, good jokes, though. Uh, so I was uh, I was reading up. Were you going to be a communications major and then you yeah. quit? Uh, this is how it was quoted in the story I read. Due to lack of interest. Is that right? <laughs> it was it was written as lack of interest, which I was like, I can see how you I, would be. I, I have a lack of interest in this line of work. I, I, guess, I guess you're someone, in a much cooler someone line of work. Someone surmised it that way. I think I had a lack of interest in college, period. Yeah. Not specifically just communications. But yeah, I did. I did start off in communications. I did. And you, I thought I wanted to do something like this. And then what you, you got into music and then into, music, into comedy. And then comedy. Yeah, yeah, you made the right choice. That's a much, uh, it's a much more interesting yeah, uh, field, I, say so. I would say. You've, uh, I, I, I got before the show, I was going to ask you this a lot. You have, you've heard this program before? Yes. You're familiar with, uh, with, with the show. So what, if you were going to critique the show, as a former <laughs> communications fan, if you if you're going to critique the show, we too harsh, we not funny enough. Like if you're going to critique the show, how would you critique the show? I mean, I think that it's it's well balanced, and I think that you guys are. He's so cute. I'm not believing this answer right now I with love, all this giggling. I do. I think it's well balanced. I I think it's funny. It could be a little funnier. You think we could be funnier? It could be a little. Could you write for us? I got I got news yeah. for you. We can't be any funnier. <laughs> you know, and I think you I think you should have like a like a consistent like antagonizing like you need a baba booey yeah yeah we need yeah, yeah. Ooh. okay can so, could be our baba booey <laughs> pen yeah are you, you are yeah we you know, who could we who could we bring in for that we can probably somebody find with some, some character that. work maybe yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah that's a that's a good idea yeah it's a good critique all right be funnier and find more and, and all of us talk less find and a guy a fourth, with a big get a fourth person yeah. on yeah. Four, that just kind of yells in so yeah, yeah yeah okay so less of us and be more funny okay i, 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 I agree <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Sam J, make sure you see her uh, at the Wilbur September 7th on tour now. Uh, check her out on Twitter at Sam J Comedy.